I see rap niggas all the time. I see that nigga. I look at jewelry. I see that nigga. I look at clothes, cars. He left so much for these niggas. Niggas are millionaires. They bosses. Because he left a blueprint for niggas. I'm better because there was a blueprint. Showed me how to do this shit, put this shit together when he wasn't around. And he would have wanted these niggas to win. He wanted niggas to not beef, not talk shit on each other. Get to the paper. Get your motherfucking money. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller. In case you haven't heard, we over here at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. Once you sign up, you get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than anyone on YouTube. All of our live shows, independent specials, um, new shows like Project Carlos, 85. And we even got, you know, special offers and discount codes for merchandise and show tickets. It's only $8.50 a month or $85 a year. That's channel85.com. Or, or on your iPhone, your Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, Roku, Android is coming soon. That's Channel 85. Make sure you subscribe. There you go. Don't the music. Play I never, is did, I never the kept none of the music when we recorded. Really? I didn't want to be Play the nigga be hopping in and out your car. Shit like that, you know. So I ain't never want to. I ain't want to be responsible for losing the music before the album come out. I was 12 when that came out. Come on, man. Twelve. I was twelve. That, I'm just saying. That's just how young. <laughs> when I hear this nigga, this nigga, oh. this nigga, was, by the grace of God, this nigga got by. <laughs> Cause everybody know me now. Nobody. This, this nigga was terrible. <laughs> this nigga was terrible. This nigga was wet. The first thing, wet. On that right front. around one deep. Sawed off shotgun. I, I saw it. Shotgun. Saw it in my bedroom which fucked my leg up because I didn't know how long it was going to take. I, like, I bought a, a, a pistol, I mean, a shotgun, and, and sawed it off. And uh, man, when I saw it, was, I would just ride around looking for trouble. Damn. And, and they get number you look. Justin, he got like, to I would be mic. out, like, trying to, what's up? You got to adjust your mic? Oh, go ahead. The pet. He said, run around looking for trouble. Whole oh, shit, now. That's, this is the bun B that that's go get the dope with no, story. ride around with no shoes on. That nigga said, round while I went. Nigga don't understand that. Yo, Go play on. stupid. Off that crap. Big I, as a motherfucker. He been, he been crying, but ain't now till drop. Uh, it's just, like, you been like crying? that sometimes. Ain't now till drop. And this is an intensifying drug, right? right? So oh, if you DC, if man. you scared <laughs> when you get wet, you're going to be Close super paranoid. Yeah. Right. But if you crunk when you get wet, you're gonna, you, you can't calm. Yeah. You super crunk. You can't calm. Yeah. Like, they can't, average nigga can't take you down. Right. Uh, that's done. Uh, you don't feel nothing, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? City, so man. I, fighting a wet nigga that, really don't get you nowhere. Nowhere, right. nope. Damn. Man, it, it alters the mental state. Like it's yeah. an alter. It's for sure an alter yeah. mental state. Yeah, it should make you get, get butt naked and oh, all. Man, every every time you get wet, it's a bad trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all bad. Uh, I'm just looking at it like for many years after I stopped getting wet. Every now and then, if you sweat or you go, you do something, you can smell it coming coming like, out your pores. Yeah, coming out your yeah. pores. PCP, it's a very man. distinct smell. Yeah, that shit stinks. It's a very, very distinct smell. As soon as you, and every time I go to DC, I ain't never been to a concert in DC. What? Yep. Them niggas on yes, that boat. Yes, sir. You know it. I'm from the city. That, that's what it is, man. Them niggas. I remember walking in the apartments, niggas with jugs of that shit, man, stinking like a motherfucker. And man. it's like, different in how every city, like, in the West Coast is Sherm, so they would dip the Sherman cigarettes yeah. in it. Where we was at, we call it fry amp. Y'all call it love boat. Yeah, dip a little boat. You know yep. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, in New York. It was down here. I'm glad I, I forgot what New York is, they could say dust, right? Because okay, New York, yeah. they dip tea leaves. Uh huh. They dip tea leaves and then they crumble the tea leaves and they lace the weed with that. Damn. That's how they get wet. With the tea leaves? Yeah. An actual herb, like another yeah. tea leaf yeah. that's good uh, for you. But you put that in the blunt, you get super high. One of, oh. one of the first stories I ever heard about my father, they were smoking boat. And the nigga got too high and got the tripping. And they, instead of giving him some milk to bring him down, they put him in a tub and ran water on him. And nigga went into a coma. Two days. There. My cousin, 
I don't know him, I never met him, but one of the first stories I heard about my cousin, a nigga was smoking boat back in the day. They was smoking that shit, nigga, you know, because it make you hot. Like right. they say, it make you real hot. Oh, that's why motherfuckers stay. Take your shit, take all your clothes off and shit. You said that's what, they get butt naked. Yeah, you, that's why them niggas get butt naked, because they get real hot. Like you get internally hot, so niggas strip. So this nigga stripped down, went to chase him behind the metro bus, they ain't never see him again. Damn. Yeah, that shit. I didn't, when I tell you, like, my teenage years, that's what niggas was on. Like, that's why I was all, I never did Jay, drugs. Like, I'm never did Except drugs. All my contemporaries. Never Every, did drugs I until I went to college. Three, because two, Big Mike, Scarface. Yeah. Pimp. You know what I mean? I smoked dip with Gangsta, Gangsta Nip. Nip. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, like that, that shit scared days. me so Nip. bad. Yeah, went with Gangsta Nip, then was wild. Being in the streets. It was wild, a Gangsta Nip days. story. There ain't nobody well, gave it was, us It's not even a story. It was a way of life. Like, you go to you go to Nip them house, like, it was Nip and... and, and <laughs> So you have Nip there, you have Klondike Cat there, and you have like maybe Pharaoh and Fry and Icy Hyde and them from um I can't say I ever saw um everybody from Kick though. I never saw Young K in there, but um I thought it was for Street Military. But yeah, no, you go in there and be no electricity. I was a dope house. You so dope out there. But niggas is wet, they eating. Cereal, they would eat Captain Crunch raw, like out the box, right. and niggas would be slap boxing and freestyling and this shit, right. just in a in a in a hot ass dope the house. Environment, with, yeah, just, just, you know, eating Captain Crunch, tear the roof of your mouth up. I couldn't wait. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get over there. Right. I couldn't wait to get over there well, and just be in that problem. space and just. I don't know, man. It just where is not something that you want to do on your own. Right. Like, you don't want to just be sitting around getting wet by yourself. That's just bad business. Oh, trust me. That's I bad know. business. Because if shit go bad, there's nobody to help you. Yep. Mm. Like, I got wet one time, and we was in the upstairs in the apartment, and I looked out, and my car was moving. So I ran out, and I grabbed the front end of my car, and I told niggas, man, go in and hit the right. emergency brake, and cause my car is moving. And they couldn't convince me for about two hours. I would have two hours. Couldn't convince me my car wasn't moving. I'm outside holding the front end of my, of my, my Buick Park Avenue. Uh, that bit with Paul. My oh, man, God, so Paul. God so rest his soul. Man, so Paul. God rest his soul, nigga. I never forget. Get the back. My man thought a nigga stole his feet. He got smoked a dipper, fell asleep. His girl took his shoes off. Nigga woke up tripping. I'm in the front room playing mad. Nigga get to yelling. Ah, ah. I'm like, man, what the fuck? I run in the back room. Nigga, I'm like, man, what the fuck wrong with you? Slam. He be like, man, hey, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? You let these steal my feet? I'm like, oh, this nigga tripping. So I go outside, I tell everybody, hey man, come here, this nigga tripping. So we trying to get the nigga to realize the nigga, your feet still on you. This girl high too, so she in the corner crying, lunched out. So my man put his shoes back on him. He like, oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, nigga, I'm back. Get to hugging niggas and shit. I said, man, I ain't never doing this shit. Probably got up and walked further than ever walked in the hell on. True story, man. That shit different, man. I Like growing up in the city, man, that's all niggas was on. That's why I just was... I'm real skeptical about niggas who want that shit because you'll end up having to do something to your partner off that shit because they you they lose so, your whole like concept of reality, my nigga. Is it addictive or is it just... Yeah, every drug is addictive. Don't fool yourself. It's mm -hmm. for, for every joint that you be like, nah, I'm a chill. It's, it's literally like people that'll suck dick for weed. Damn. <laughs> that's, that's extreme. And it seems like... It seemed, like it seemed like a lot. It seemed like a lot because weed is plentiful and weed is cheap. But motherfuckers is broke and lazy. Damn. I knew a bitch who would do that. Ask the weed man, ask the weed man how much puss in head he get. Right. I was just gonna say, a bitch wants to smoke. Yeah. For a fuck. For a seven. Just, yeah. just to smoke a blunt. I'm like, where you at? You see like you got some weed. I'm like, hell yeah. Pull up. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 cheaper than a steak then. Cheaper. That's crazy. You dig what I'm saying? But then, like, when, when the crazy yeah. thing was to get the wet, like, when we used to get it from back in the day, shout out, it used to be get it from Nord back in the day, and um, Nord would be wet. So that'd be a whole adventure. Trying to just get, trying the, to get, get the wet nigga, from a yeah. nigga that's wet. Oh, my God. You got it. Yeah, ain't no I thought telling, I had it. Ain't no telling what he gonna be on when you pull up at the house. Oh, nigga, what? Oh, my God. He, may be, seen, on, he may be on whatever. I done seen niggas do some of the wildest shit. I'm talking about, man, you think I can jump from this building to that building? No, nigga, you going to die. Nigga, I can't die. I can't die. I'm God. You like, oh, these niggas yeah. lunched out, man. You was jumping. I'm a nigga jump out of moving car. Oh, yeah. I had a nigga Yo. jump from 
I had a rapper jump out of the driver's seat to where I was, like telling me it was my. I, it was your, it was your turn to drive. Yeah. So he in your seat. We wet, going down I ten. We hit the freak nick. It's me and Big Mike and the dude D A from the Black Monks. And we on the interstate. He, he, you go to the social media page. He told the story, and he in the back seat. He don't get hot. So he in the back seat. Me and Big Mike wet. So we probably around somewhere close to New Orleans or whatever. Mike was like, Bun B, it's your time to drive. I was like, all right, pull over. Nah, I can't pull over. I'm a, at, when I count to three, I'm going to jump over and you get over and get the wheel. I'm like, <laughs> they doing about 80 uh -huh. in the state. I'm like, what you talking about, Mike? Pull, just pull over. One. <laughs> Mike, don't do this shit. Mike, please, don't do this shit. Please. Two. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And the nigga in the back seat is like, Trip, oh, he's please, really like, please, please don't do please. this shit. He's screaming because... He, he had to ride with us, and that was already something I knew. God bless D.A., good nigga. I've been on him for many years. We went to school together. I knew that was the last car he wanted to be in. Right. Like I said, I'm a different nigga now. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. You can just tell. And I that nigga, ride with them. And that nigga said three and jumped from out of there, man. And by the grace of God, and you're going to hear that a lot as I talk about my life. Pop you, pop I, got, I got around that nigga, and this is a big man. Right. And I'm bigger than too. Like, right. I'm, I'm smaller now, but... Shit, I probably would have been at least 280, 290 back mm. then. And Mike, at least the same. And try, like, I don't know how I caught that wheel. It didn't swerve and flip on the highway. And what was y'all drive? What kind of car was it? Suburban. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a steady car right suburban, there. Suburban, nigga. That's a good ass front end alignment. Yes, it is. Damn. You saw the Scarface tiny desk. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. This was born, Scarface was born for that. That was like, beautiful. this is the first time I think most people have actually seen Scarface in the way he's been wanting to be seen. Right. Like, him with the, first of all, he's a musician. Like, he was, he's a musician. So he takes, you know, playing the guitar and playing songs with the band very seriously. They practice a lot. Um, but it's not something he get to do a lot because Look. nightclub and really can't really facilitate it. And most people that want to see Scarface want to hear rap songs. Right. Um, and he got a very deep music history, you know what I'm saying, knowledge. Can play anything, rap, R&B, rock, soul, whatever it is. But the room don't really be wanting it from him sometimes. Right. This is like him finally being able to get into a space that was going to allow him to show everything that Scarface is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Actually being able to break down, like, the way he rapped in the room gave more poignancy to lyrics that were already full of depth and weight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You really got to be like, damn, that nigga really was saying some very, very deep shit. Reese's father you know what I'm saying? his hand out. That's yeah, I mean, so just cold. all no, the way. It's, and it's, it's beautiful that the world finally gets to see him how he's always wanted to be seen. Man. And the reward My face of quote forever is, Real gangsters ass niggas don't run from shit because real, real gangsta ass niggas don't, don't snarl fight. Fast. Don't run bad, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, being from D.C., man, Face was always a pillar in growing up. And, like, you'll see a lot of people that really treat Face like he's from D.C. Because, you know what I mean, I remember seeing Face walking up and down. I used to work at a barber shop on George Avenue. Face used to be walking up and down George Avenue by itself back in the day. And then he would go and play live with the go-go bands. He would just show up and just rap with Backyard for hours. And the city loved his music because the way that he set the narrative. I mean, just all of the down south music. That's how I fell in love with them so much. Like DC feel like Houston. Yeah. Like, it's very strange to go that far east and to be around the city with that close of a proximity to New York that is so un- New York, like there's no element. Maybe boots. That's about the only thing y'all have in common right. is That's the it. Timberland. That's about it. And it was it, it was it was off putting because niggas sound like us, talk like us, act like us, and love like between UGK, Scarface, and A Ball and MJG. I don't really know what more DC would want from you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. Like they've I always that, made us feel that. like we was home. Uh. And of course, I was getting wet, so that was a plus, right? Because right? so you get good wet. But then the whole go-go aspect of everything, you know, meeting Big G and, and you know, getting very close and and actually being like in the spot. Before I played with go-go bands, I would go and watch Backyard play and just be in the room. Something like you know what I'm saying, course, like yeah. the late night shit. And then somebody proposed. It was right when Pimp came home. It was when first. Out of town show we did when Pimp came home. It was like, 
And I kind of had to explain it. It was like, we're going to go and we're going to do our shit. Right. The rap version. We're going to do a whole show. You know what I'm saying? One hour. Bum B, Pimp C, UGK music for an hour. And then we're going to go upstairs and we're going to do it again, but with the go-go band. Right. And he was like, in the same club to the same people? Yes, that's exactly how they want it. Yeah. And they're going to pay us? Yes, you're going to yeah. get paid for downstairs yeah. and you're going to get paid for upstairs. Yes, sir. Shit, hell yeah. Right. You know, and then we came in a little early and sat with the band and, you know, they had already had the songs memorized. It was just some of them had that little off tempo and uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? But, man, that shit was real easy, man. It took about 30 minutes for us to be like, oh, no, this is it. This is nothing. Right. Like, let's go. And then you just kind of flow with the band because it's very fluid. It's not as concrete as it would be with your normal show mm-hmm. because some songs you might do a song that's normally 3.30, four minutes long, and that bitch might go for seven minutes because right, the, the band, band just vibing, and they might get into a bass guitar solo or some shit like that, or a nigga might go hard on the bongos for a couple mm-hmm. minutes, yeah. and it just be that. Next thing you know, we doing front, back, side, to side for 10 minutes in this yeah. song. You know what I'm saying? And it feels great. Now, D.C. always, man, really open up their doors to everybody from Houston. For some reason, man, I don't know nobody from that that's ever been to D.C. that didn't feel like some kind of automatic kinship. I don't know how y'all built this beautiful Southern empire. It's very Southern. It's Southern. It's, 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 it's very, very Southern. Southern driven. Yeah. And, but you can't get Maybe it. because it's so black. Yeah. So many it's, black people. Well, yeah. I mean, there's more black people in New York, though, because New York got more people in general. Right. Yeah. You know it's what I'm saying? But, and y'all, is like, as far east damn near as you can go. Yeah. Which is crazy. But then y'all right there with Virginia, and Virginia's, Virginia's they south. Yeah. What's another place that gave you, like, a whole lot of love that you didn't expect? Like, y'all fuck with us like this out here? That shocked you? Really, it, I won't even say the East Coast necessarily. The East Coast did give us a lot of love. But I think it was like going to Detroit. Mm-hmm. And Detroit is the same way, kind of like, kind of like D.C. Like, they got their own identity, which is evident. But they still not to be that far. East Coast, they not New York. That shit was very off-putting to me. I thought because, you know, New Jersey is so... New Jersey is a lot like New York. And Connecticut is so close. And Connecticut used to be very similar to New York. New- Connecticut got gangbangers and shit now. It's really wild. But, like, going to Detroit and, like... No, I- I'll say Chicago. I'll say Chicago. I had no idea it was like that for UGK in Chicago. Even It, it was... And this was like the old Chicago, like Cabrini, mm-hmm. Chicago. You know Rick. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so, still up. And like to go into these cities that were very gangster, but very specific in their gangsterism and how you moved in the city, like to be embraced by niggas that don't need to embrace nobody, right. that don't typically really fuck with niggas, right. like outside town, out of town people, to get that kind of love, it always was, I always felt like it was different for us. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't, we never carried ourselves like, We'll whoop everybody or no shit like that. We the toughest niggas in town. We ain't. After the city, we couldn't bring no pistols, so we knew we wasn't no, you know, if shit got really real, things was going to happen. We just tried to show people respect when we went to their city. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about, I don't know, about checking in and none of that, but we would always find the realest. We sat around by the realest niggas in town. We would all that niggas didn't come fuck with us, smoke some weed, chop it up. Back then, it was very easy to find out who was the nigga in town. Right. Because it wasn't no bunch of different crews and shit like that. Oh, you going up to Detroit, oh, you need to holler at so-and-so and them. And then you holler at so-and-so and them, the niggas bring you some weed, y'all talk, kick it or whatever. And then you fucking with so-and-so and them for the next 20 years. Right. Until maybe a nigga get killed or, God forbid, or, or do some time. But right. niggas I met in New Orleans, niggas I still fuck Rock with ways. in New Orleans. Years, really, now, it's only really three of us left out of a group of like eight niggas. It's only like three of us left. But that's kind of how these things happen. You tap in with real niggas, that are really actually tied into the city, but because they tied into the city, shit be happening. Right. Like, shit be happening for real. Right. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right, all right? Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want, you know, to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, all right? It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. That's right, a licensed therapist, all right? And switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. That means if you don't like the one, then maybe they ain't listening right. 
Go ahead, switch on up. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash 85 South today to get 10% off your first month, okay? That's BetterHelp.com slash 85 South. Go get help, food. I'm a grown man. There's some, there's some hair out there. <laughs> it's some hell that he close. Look at Chess here. And Mike is Mike in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike is deep in the backwoods. I'm just letting you know. Take your time. Bro. Smoke break. Smoke break. Smile break. Jack is hard, man. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. OJ, I got you one, too. A Jack? Yeah. In green. Oh, man, that's my color. Come on, Joe. How color. did I know, Joe? That's my color. I'm going to pull that Mary Trillman's hat back out. That's her ski. That's her ski. Corey Moe here? Oh, that's yeah, what's up. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, you say unfortunately? Yeah, he typically want to be where I'm at. Well, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I hope the office still stays well, that you gave left it. No, I just left it. I brought the song. That's what I'm telling you. I, I went and that's what took me. That's why I got here a little late. Okay. I went straight to the studio from the plane okay. and laid the song. Okay. So you would already have some reference. Okay. For it and content and subject, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's going up. I'm going crazy on that it's bitch. And then I did, another, I did another song. Okay. But just because I was there, I did okay. another song. Gotcha. Down a couple if this your way of telling us we in UGK, I'm about to crack. No, they, no they, <laughs> that, that membership was already locked in. Yeah. We ain't had no new members. Oh, yeah. We ain't, ain't had no new members. When I'm gone, we subtracted the last nigga. Last so it's over. It. <laughs> it's only subtracted from here. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. It just, it couldn't be. It couldn't. It couldn't be no more. It couldn't be nothing, nothing new. Like, it's that, it. That's, it's just, that, that it, it, I, I, there's nothing to add. Right. There's nothing to add to it. Boy, as a nigga who got your music in my DNA, I, I just got to say thank you, man. Right, you're welcome. I okay. Thank you. That shit is... Y'all are that was, that's part, part of, of my blueprint. Team, for real. Man, who, who you... Nigga, you already know. Nigga. I mean... This nigga here, Pimp C, Bun B, fan. I mean, oh, it's evident. Crazy. Yeah, you know it, it's evident. Crazy. You know it. It's evident. Crazy. It's ridiculous, man. You know what I mean? The nigga wouldn't even... Diss me on the rap at the show. Right, he said I'm I like, can't this do this. This is awkward. Uh, nah, man, I'm not doing it. I could, I'm <laughs> not putting that on, on my niggas resume. Like, nigga. <laughs> Hell nah, nigga. Nope. <laughs> I used to be ranking on niggas in school, so I was waiting for it. Nah, like, uh-uh. you won't get that. He told me that too. I'm sitting there, okay, this way. I was just more in awe of the fact right. that this nigga knew who I was. Like, you, get, I don't know if y'all, you know, understand, like, guys of your, your ilk or from your era, but, you know, that confirmation, to get that confirmation to to know that y'all paying attention to what we got going on. Cause like you said, when you was talking about the niggas in certain places, they don't have, you don't have to be welcoming nigga. You can, you don't, you don't have to be we, friendly. Niggas absolutely know, just to be fair, some niggas are just hoes about it. That's kind of like what they feel like is part of their mystique to act like they don't, no, niggas know. Niggas absolutely know. All nigga, real rap niggas know every nigga that's out here rapping damn near. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas just, some of these niggas is funny. They just funny niggas. And then you give funny niggas money, and they feel like the money and the fame co-sign their behavior. It confirms the funny niggas. You know what I'm saying? So. Ooh. You, ain't, you ain't hit a bar. Ooh. And people, people tend to, look, if everybody was a real solid. nigga and everybody was solid, more people would be successful. You know what I'm saying? But it's more fuck niggas than it is real niggas. Yes, it is. And that's why there aren't more successful real people because a lot of fuck niggas held a lot of people back purposely. Like, made it their life's work to just make sure this nigga wasn't going to be nobody. Because people, when you grow up, like, when you grow up, niggas, you, you be around niggas and you assume this nigga going to be exactly who he is at 12, he peed in a bed. You assume he going to grow up just be a grown nigga that peed in a bed. All this type of shit. You feel like when you go to high school, like, the picking order is already laid as who gonna be the shit, the basketball nigga, the football nigga, the cheerleader. You know what I'm saying? They're, it's like they already decided who gonna be the shit and who ain't. And then life happens. And niggas start coming up out of nowhere, getting money and making something out of themselves. That's the part I love. And it throw, but it throw their whole shit off. Yeah. Because if I said I'm the shit, but he and I said he wasn't shit and he doing better than me, and I ain't got shit who it's it's it fuck up the order of everything. Mm-hmm. The fine girl in the school never ended up being the finest girl all her life. You know what I'm saying? And then when the tables turned, and the niggas that wanted her back then, that Don't she turned her nose up, 
niggas wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole now. Niggas doing something for themselves, got something, they realized you would you were cute for about two and a half years. <laughs> Four summers. You know. Two semesters, ho. That's same, it. same thing with women dealing with niggas. Is, you know, everybody don't make it to college. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the best football player in your school might be 25th in the state if he lucky. Never get that scholarship. But she didn't got pregnant for the nigga. Right. Thinking the nigga for to do something. Now he just a nigga that used to play football talking about who he was in the 12th grade all the time. That ain't no... That's how my chick was in uh, the high school. She was like, you in the street. I heard you just got to a shootout. I can't be with you. And I'm like, okay, so the nigga you got, he in school. I'm like, but when I tried doing school, you want to fuck with me. Now, a year later, go by, you had a baby by this nigga. This nigga don't even want to go to school no more. I'm in the street, but I got money. I'm like, baby, well, we can go to the movies and right. talk about the shit. You got to take care of a whole nother nigga who you thought was going to be better than me. Now look at you. You have to give yourself enough time in life to be, be aware of what the options play out to be. You get to nothing in the first girl, you fucking, you ain't give yourself no options. Uh, you just stuck, kind of stuck where you are in that position. And I, when I say stuck, I don't mean you, you, you are, your, your next 18 years are predetermined right. for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was that was driving you to go and be who it was you wanted to go and be in life, Nothing now you have another, another priority that's demanding that you step it up now. Right. So if you had a four-year plan or a six-year plan or eight-year plan to be successful, that's cool, but you're going to have to go bag some groceries or do something on year one because it's baby here. Right. Now, you know, my brother wanted to go and be in the military and all of that. He got his girl, high school girlfriend pregnant. Then he caught a case, couldn't go in the military. By the time he got off of paper and he four five cheer and now he, now you got you can't go in the military. It just right. you have to give yourself time, man, to see exactly how this shit might play out. You know. Mm -hmm. Are you oh, from Port Arthur? Like that's a smaller town, right? Yeah, one of the what, smallest. One, like, what was your experience growing up in a small town? They're like have aspiration to be a big star. So for me, it was different because I was born in a big town and moved to the small town. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'd always been going to Port Arthur all my life because I had a lot of family there. When well, my mom and daddy got divorced, because my mama is the oldest of her brothers and sisters, but my grandmother was still having other children, and my great-grandmother was still having children. So, what? yeah, so my mama's... Aunties are really like her cousins because right. they the same age. Sound like me. You know what I'm saying? They was all kind of like the same age. I got a so, so all her and all my my mama's aunties, my all my grandmother's sisters were still living in Port Arthur. So that was her family. support system. Right. Oh, I got a huge family. My mama, my my mama's family. My mama had 13 brothers and sisters, and two adoptive. Like you know them cousins that y'all end up raising. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my daddy had, I want to say, 10, maybe 11 brothers and sisters. You, strong, you know what I'm bro, saying? All crazy. of them have at least four children, and now we all got children and grandchildren. So I got probably between 85 and 100 first cousins. God dang. No, but that's you know a real family, But see, though. my mama got 10 sisters. Because I got them on my mama's side and my daddy's side. One of my cousins is... My my mama's brother married, married my daddy's cousin. Yeah, so we, like we we kid twice. Yeah. I'll go see yeah. him. I'll go see That's him at the reunion regardless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cousin Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then all my family from Louisiana, they they speak French, but they ain't teach us French. Mm. But that's how they would talk about grown shit in front of kids. Okay. So they jump in and out the shit. But they ain't never teach us the shit. And everybody was telling you to learn Spanish because you lived in Texas and right. Louisiana and now. Everybody that speaks French in my family going to die with it, and none of us can carry that on. Mm. I said, see what y'all get? Like, me and my cousin woke up. He's like, hey, man. He's like, did, did they teach you French? I said, yeah, teach me none of that shit. Like, man, I don't think they taught none of us French. And they knew we, how to speak And we French. were like, oh, no, eloquently. Like, my family's all, like, Cajun people. So they spoke it very well, but it'd be in front of the kid. And child, you know, jump out to that bitch. Do I have something? You know what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> and so and you got, and the most you, the more you would listen, you could draw some context mm. out of certain things. Right. You could get bits and pieces. Right. Just like if you be, if you, like I'm in Texas, it's a lot of Spanish that's spoken around me. Right. I could get bits and pieces based on what the conversation going on in the room right. type of shit. But, but uh, yeah, no, I, get, I say all that. To say I got a big ass family. But we got it. I'm about to do a family, a family reunion, right? Because I never, not say I, I was concerned with my grandfather, 
Now, I'm only speaking on my daddy's side, not even my mama's side, because that's who I've been with since I was a baby. On my daddy's side, I know my grandmama, his mama. She had two brothers and a sister. I know the sister never met the brother. M Mr. Lewis had eight more kids. So I, I got a whole bunch of cousins that I just found out that was my cousin, but I'm just thinking they grew up in the, in the neighborhood, but found out they my grandmama brother grandkids. These are my cousins. I'm thinking they just stayed in the neighborhood. Now I got my daddy, daddy, who had 12 sisters and brothers. And all them? All them in Philadelphia, Miami, Virginia, and my auntie got contact. Now, now check this out. I'm gonna give you a, a, a this is how old my, my, my tree is. My, my granddaddy, which is my daddy, daddy, his niece, You which bullshit. Is, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm involved. Listen, Go ahead. My granddaddy. Your daddy, is, daddy. Which is my daddy, daddy. His niece, which is his sister's daughter. Right. 94. <laughs> my cousin. You got a 94-year-old cousin? I got a 94-year-old cousin. Boy, this nigga DC. <laughs> Boy, your family Family's ancient. And then a motherfucker. But I, how would you explain who you are to her? She know me. Her mind is vividly. When she say my daddy name, like when my cousin say, you know Sonny? Yeah, I know Sonny. That's Woot the Woot. That's Hattie's boy. Yeah, and that was that, your dad. And that's your dad. That daddy. was your daddy, cousin. Because he know brother. me. Yeah. Well, make him your third cousin, right yeah. before. Hattie is my brother's wife. Nope. Hattie is my uncle's wife. That's what it is. That'd be the best shit, though. The calculator though. broke, by the way. Yeah. When it comes to computing how many niggas you can, too. The calculator is broke at this but point. But see, did the thing we that, that, that a lot of people... <laughs> but did the thing with black families, we only stop at our grandparents. Your grandparents have siblings that's also your cousins. Like, when I have grandchildren, I don't want them to be like, all right, granddaddy. I'm like, no, you got a crazy auntie, which is my sister, which is your great aunt. She got kids, which are my nephews, which are your cousins. Your family trees don't just start with me. It goes on and on. And I'm gonna tell you how old, old your folk really is. Your great uncle. 130. <laughs> 130? Right. This nigga is getting the money. By the time they had that conversation. Uh, by the time they had that conversation. Well, it's about 100 now. So who's going with the genealogy? I want one. It's a, it's a cat that he's been doing genealogy, and my wife found him, and he, he she brought him over to us, and he went through my tree, right. and he got literally the dude that came from, like, Italy or France somewhere mm -hmm. and came and fucked and made all of us. Damn. Like... All of us. Like, and I'm kidding to so many people. That would the French part come in. Huh, exactly. I'm kidding to so many people that are like from this one person. Mm -hmm. Like he went through everybody, like, oh, your grandmother from here, your grand woo woo woo. Okay, so actually your great grandmother and his great grandmother and that dude great grandmother mm -hmm. are cousins. Mm -hmm. Because they all have the same aunt. And then this dude. Is from the uncle, right. and so you kin to him, right? Too, but all y'all kin to this. They sent me, the, they sent me the picture and everything. He brought me like. You gotta know how the family tree is is is, is brought about. You can be kin, but group. then you can't be kin if you know where to stop it, because y'all can have a correlated sibling. You dig what I'm saying? Like my uncle wife. Once my uncle wife had kids, right? And they had kids. Cool. That's how we related to my uncle wife because of my uncle and them are his children. Now my uncle wife's brother had babies with my cousin. But that didn't stop my uncle wife from going to mess with my cousin because he like, we family. No, the you family know, tree. Bobby Womack? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, no, Bobby, he ain't watching, this bro. Nigga, this I'm nigga, this nigga, yeah, man, like, man, this boy, boy, I'm, I'm too, telling you. you this have me think about this, this shit later for real. on. I'm like telling you. DC cousin. cousin. Was married to his great uncle. Be like them numbers I'm in the matrix, nigga. This shit lit, bro. You had to be like the best little boy in math class to remember all Oh, yeah, I'm shit. a good math nigga. One thing about it, and I know how it, how it worked, because I, I just sat with my cousin yesterday, and we were just going through family trees and all that, and I'm just watching my grand, like looking at my granddaddy pictures. Like, we had trimmed our family tree so much, I it's just a bush. I was smoking with uh -huh. yesterday, much <laughs> less. 
But so I'm, I'm just intrigued. I'm intrigued on about where I know, trying to figure out where we come from. Which one, the baby one or the no. oldest one? The oldest one. Just got to it, old lad today. He got to be. I think he, I think he, I think he used to babysit 69. my grandfather or some shit. Like I think my older brother's 69. That's hard. Got a grandbrother. That's hard. That's what it's called. What y'all do together? Argue. That's why I got an old soul. Yeah, you ain't winning no argument with a nigga that got a 69-year-old brother. He gonna say some shit to you you ain't heard in years. You, jive, you been cussed that real different. Yeah. Yeah. Jive, you been, you been cussed. I been cursed that way and hit the soul. You been cussed real <laughs> they different. Try to, they try to sit you down. Ain't no arguing. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Don't nobody. That's why you couldn't read it in third grade. Yeah, yeah. Taught motherfucker. Don't nobody call, don't nobody cuss your ass out like an old nigga. Oh, hell no. Nah. When an old nigga say a cuss say word that? in the middle of the, <laughs> when he cussing you out, you old motherfucker, you. Did that, yeah. did that, that nigga, nigga know, man. did he know you when you was a baby that you was his baby brother or did you meet him later in he life? He was one of them, he was one of them baby brothers where he like, I don't think that child belonged to daddy. Oh, well, that was predetermined hate. I'm like, yeah. God damn. Was he the baby before you? No, he was the oldest. Oh, that's, yeah, that's that different hate. He ain't like none of y'all. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what I'm trying to tell you, nigga. Yeah, I ain't been like since I got here. You 56 and you got a newborn baby brother? You like, nigga, what the fuck? You should be happy that daddy's getting some pussy. No, you should nigga. be more concerned about your grandkids <laughs> than your daddy kids yeah, at that exactly. point. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. I ain't but 50. I got grandkids. But see, he was younger then. See, he's 69 now. I'm 31. So he was in his 30s then. In his feelings. In his feelings. About, about a, some cheering. About a month old baby that can't even hold his neck up. Trauma, man. This you ain't on a nigga that can't even see you. Who, who talking about me? Is he bald now? Who? Your brother. Oh, y'all got yeah, half. Yeah, he bald. Yeah, that's why he mad. He bald. He saw it. He saw it as a baby. <laughs> he he saw it. This nigga gonna have half. No, nah, I, I fought with him though. He a good nigga though. You know, he just old nigga. You know them old niggas to be mad about anything. That, that's me. I'm old nigga. You the old nigga now? You consider yourself, do you, at this point, you consider yourself to be Yeah, old. yeah, I'm an old nigga. I'm a survivor, oh, nigga. Yeah, huh? that's just an old nigga. That's I wouldn't the only thing you, you say about nigga. an old nigga, he survived. Yeah. I, I take pride in these years now. I know what it took to get here. Right. You know, it's a lot of niggas I moved with, man, in this world that didn't make it this far. Obviously, my right hand yeah, your right didn't hand, make man. it this far. And so I take pride in the fact that I lived this long. And I'm still, like, actually pr pretty good at what I do. I'm Great. still... Still think I'm good at what I do. Still actually appreciate it for doing it. Got other shit going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shows, I'm getting paid more now than I've ever been paid before to rap because I don't have to. Right. So they got to pay me extra to get me to even leave the crib because I got other shit going on. Right. So it's just, you know, the blessings are really coming in, man. I put a lot of hard work in. I say quiet. I didn't say too much about, about a lot of shit that happened. That shit don't really benefit me or whatever. Whatever happened, happened. I'm here now, and this is where we at. So I put a lot of bullshit to the side to just open myself up to be blessed, and it came in rain in the pole. Okay. Man, speaking of your right hand, man, I, I hear a lot of people speculate about this, but I don't think nobody would have the type of insight that you would have to answer this question. Figuratively speaking, if, if the pimp was still here, how do you think he would, would fit in today's society and narrative, whether it be music or just in general. It would be on steroids. It would be boots on steroids. Social media, it would be boots on steroids. Content and everything like that. You know, Pimp understood who he was and how he was seen in this world. And he, you, you can listen to some of the last songs he was talking about. You know, Pimpin' Ain't Dead, it just moved, moved to, to the, the website. website. You know what I'm saying? So like he was very my dick aware where shit was going. Life. And... Pimp would have been, I know this is going to sound crazy. It, if, if off, like, I think it was Snoop that just said OnlyFans offered him mm. a bunch of money to get on there and show his dick or whatever. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Why? Fuck. <laughs> I could, <laughs> if, if he wasn't married, which he was married, he had a good wife. She was very, very loyal to him. He had a good wife. But in this OnlyFans era, Pimp C would have been making some money somewhere, some kind of way. Like, somewhere between Boots and Sauce Walker, you would have, like, well, well actually, not even in between, but, like, on the outer yeah. parameters because he operated on the on the furthest. Like, we're we going to go there. We're going all the way there. Fuck mm -hmm. it. Because um, it would have been money involved. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying he would have showed his dick. Right. But I think some hoes would have been showing something. Right. Like, it would have been some money there. You know what I'm saying? For him, he would have found a way to take advantage of it. But then also, you know, social media can be your downfall, too, because everybody ain't going to always agree with everything right. that you say. But I think the music would have been amazing to, to see him have, have an opportunity to produce for a lot of people. I think him and Drake would have had a phenomenal relationship, two mm -hmm. light-skinned niggas that can mm -hmm. rap and sing. Mm -hmm. I think the synergy is just would have be just dope. been really, really ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And also, niggas like Future that were just young and wild and getting to the paper and moving a certain way. I think, you know, people like that would have would have gained a lot from being up under a person like Pimp because, you know, the, the guy that, that, one of the first people to find Future was one of my right-hand people back in the day, you know? So the proximity that he would have had to a lot of talent today would have really altered the direction of the thing. But then... I would think it was a lot of shit that he wouldn't have been cool with, too, right. you know? Um, but, man, I think about, you know, Megan Thee Stallion produced by Pimp C. Think about Sexy Red and Pimp C on a record. These are natural things that obviously would have happened that I right. look at, you know? But also, like, on the R&B side, you know, he was, he was very much a singer. And I think today's R&B lends itself a lot to what he was he what he was doing. Did. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it would have been a very sweet spot for him to just really be like, hey man, I just want to fuck. Like, but in a sensual way. Like, you right. know, I really, I'm really, I really want to fuck you though. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just fuck with you. Like, I'm really trying to get you and fuck, put some dick on you. Right. Like, for real. I want to put some dick in you. Like, for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, what's going on? It's your boy DC Young Fly, man. One thing about me and what I love to do, <laughs> my favorite app prize picks of all times, you dig what I'm saying? And getting started is super duper easy. Listen, all you gotta do is make an account right, make a deposit, and pick more or less on two to six player stats to win payouts up to 25 times your entry. Do the cal bring the calculator out, put in a hummer, times 25, that's what you will win if all six of your entries <laughs> go good. Don't you want them to go good? They easy, and all first time users, check this out, right? If you scared, check this out. We got a deal for you. All first time users that deposit and use 85 South Code will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit 50, prize picks will give you $50. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Available in over 30 states. So go ahead, right on over to prize picks right now by tapping the link below, the one that's popping up right here. Tap that and tell them 85 South sent you, all right? Download prize picks today and play daily fantasy sports. Make sure you use our promo code 85 South when you sign up. Cause there's a whole bunch of games going on this week, man. And you don't want to miss it, man. These interests, they popping up. And they and, and, and you know they quick with it too. They'll pop up and then delete them. So make sure you get all the good ones. Cause it be some good ones in there. You don't want to miss that 25 or that free entry deposit. Cause they gonna match it. Go on over to Prize Picks. Tell them 85 South Cinch. Go on get your fantasy <laughs> sports playing on. Yeah, it is. We not playing. And when you win, make sure you say, eh, eh, not playing. Eh, got him. Establish. You know what I'm saying? Come and fuck something. Like, right. for real. And he would have been all about that musically. So when you say, I hear you say that's your right hand. Like, coming from where we come from in our environment, <clears throat> it's that's not a... a, a a title we just give somebody that's earned, you know? And what would you, what, what kind of like attributes or characteristic, characteristics you could say that you, you saw in Pimp when you was like, oh yeah, this is my right hand man. Loyal to a fault. Like loyal to a fault. And that was the thing about us <laughs> that superseded everything. Cause when we started, there was a lot of people around. We was all trying to make music. We all wanted to be in a game, and then life started pulling people in different directions, and me and him kind of looked up, was like, man, we still really want to do this shit. And we realized that nobody really wanted to do it as much as we did. And so as we went through shit and got the deals and got fucked over and got a new manager and got fucked over, all these different things, the one constant was that we got each other. So there's times where I get frustrated. I don't want to do this shit no more. We ain't making no bread. Fuck this, we can be doing different shit and getting some money. People keep me, Pimp would keep me focused, keep me on my note. And then me time when Pimp would get frustrated, 
tired of dealing with these white folks and these labels, man. They don't want to understand us. They won't let us do what we're supposed to do. I keep them focused. I keep them centered. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what it was about because, like, Pimp had friends, right? Pimp had his own circle of niggas because he Pimp moved a different way than I moved. So I had my own circle of niggas. But none of our friends from our circle were closer to us than we were to each other. Right. Because as much as they was around us, they still hadn't really been through the shit that me we, right. and him had actually been it's through. Real, like, rap street wars with niggas looking for you with guns. Like, real shit. Right. You know, niggas coming to concerts, they wasn't a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Getting sued. You know, IRS coming in, freezing bank accounts. Y'all wasn't a part of that part. That was the only person we could call about that was us. Now, I'm not saying they wasn't a part of helping us build this company. Right. A lot it's of people were. But it's just that they were just times where y'all could go home and kind of separate from it, and we had to kind of live it every single day. So me and him always had that between us. And then it was the music, the chemistry was just, it's bananas, and it's really, I could say it, and it'll sound like cap, but if you ask anybody that was ever in the studio with us or around in the time that we made those music, those songs, those albums, we would be in the same room writing to the same song and would not have to, I wouldn't have to tell him where I'm at unless it was something that was structured for him to go right after me or something so he'd have to know my last time. <clears throat> but if we say we want to talk about cars, we can write a whole song about cars. I ain't got to ask him what he's saying because he don't like the same kind of cars I like. He ain't going to do in the car what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't like the same type of women. So it's a song about girls, okay? I'm going to do this, this type of girl. He want to do that with several women or whatever, whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? But we, the only thing we really had in common was getting to where the fuck we was trying to go. Sometimes he'd have an idea, I'd have an idea. Some days we'd take his route. Some days, some days people needed to deal with Pimp C. Right? Some days people needed to deal with Bun B. It was those characteristics that we knew would work better in certain rooms and certain spaces. But whatever it took. So when Pimp would snap and people would hear Pimp talk crazy with them, most of the time I knew, sometimes I wake up and hear the shit just like, y'all. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I would just have to feel like, you know, I know he, I know he feel like this. I know he really, really feel like this, you know? Um, if I don't agree with it, that's between me and him. Right. That's not... Between the world. That's not the world business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whether or not we agree on different things. But we're going to talk past it anyway. That'd be the thing I hate to see. I hate to see when niggas build something together and they get into it and they make shit public. Like, I'll never fuck with this nigga again. And then five years, shit. 17 years down the line, you know damn well you're going to end up fucking with this nigga again. There's going to be a different appreciation of what y'all did. Y'all going to understand and appreciate the dynamic of the relationship better as y'all get older. Mm -hmm. Realize... Y'all left a lot of good years and a lot of money on the table. So my thing is, man, let's just deal with it. There would be shit. We'd be in concert. Pip say some outlandish shit, nigga. I'm talking about like some wild shit. And I just have to, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm playing it calm, whatever, you know. Keep doing the show. Keep doing the music in the room. What the fuck was that, my nigga? What was that? And he'd be like, well, shit, you know, woo woo wham. I'd be like, man, goddamn, just give me a heads up. Because it don't matter either way. Right. I'm riding with him regardless. Right. Even if I don't agree with it, if that's what we own, that's kind of where we at with it. It's, right. it's no, it it's, <laughs> you know, I might disagree, is. but <laughs> going back to Slim Charles, man, Big G, what do you say on the why? Even if it's a lie, we got to ride on that lie. That's just what it is right. at that point. I'm not finna publicly take no other nigga's side. I'm not publicly finna disagree with the man. I tell him we wrong when it's just being him. It's right. a place and a time for everything. Yeah. But if that's where we at, if you say some shit, whether I agree with it or not, if it's out there, well, we already know what that is. You already said, nigga. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm mean, so I said we get off the stage. Well, y'all niggas know what it is now. You can say it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Move, move accordingly. Let's do it. <laughs> just move accordingly. He, he that's had, it. He had the, the, I mean, when you go back and you listen to the way he spoke about you, like, it ain't nobody he believed in more than the bun. Like, he was, I mean, I got 250,000 if you think he can. When help. nobody believed in neither one of them, we believed in each other. Right. That shit got us a long yeah. way. You could tell. That shit got us a long way. That shit was not easy. It was fucked up. A lot of people did us dirt. And it was just me and him. And mama, pretty much it. You know, mama came in, you know, put her life on the line for her child. I got the residual benefit of that. Um, so I, I never, I never could, could give her enough credit and love for what she did. And 
we he lived long enough to see the world actually understand and appreciate what it was he was trying to do. Because UGK wasn't my UGK was his faith. He woke up with sleeping. You know what I'm saying? He he really, really wanted to show the world who he was and what we could do, where we was from. And before he left, we ended up having the number one album in the world released. Not a rap, RB, none of that shit. Billboard 200, number one album. Finally got to present itself in a way that he knew if they just get the fuck out the way. Like, we literally, for riding dirty, we didn't take no money. Y'all ain't do no, no videos. Y'all ain't but not even that. We didn't take no money. We didn't take no money for riding dirty. We said, give us some equipment and give us creative control. Don't, I don't want a pity. And that's why you got riding dirty. Because the first two albums before, like with Too Hard to Swallow, the first album, there's songs that got remixed by the record company that I didn't hear till they sent me the album. Mm. Like when the sample wouldn't clear in my contract, they had to write at the label to reproduce the record. So like, what is it? One nine hundred nine seven nine seven six B U N B. I never heard that from that album till that shit came to my house about three four days before the album come out. I never heard that shit in my life. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, just that type of shit. You know, having a um, a jail or death clause in my contract. So when Pim got locked up, it was like, what? Well, clause there. One of y'all go to jail or one of y'all die. You can bring in another member, but at a reduced royalty rate. So we just wanted to know if you wanted to exercise that clause. And, you know, they were like, he's gone. So if you want to do UGK with somebody else, we can, we can do that. It'd be very easy. It's already in the contract. And I was like, what do you mean? You mean it? How can you do UGK without PMC? That's the heart of UGK. Like, I'm like, I'm going to do a solo album. You know what I'm saying? Well, about all that. You know what I'm saying? Well, can I go do it somewhere else? Like, where are you going to do it? Rap, rap a lot? Oh, no. No. No, no. Because he would know what to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. Uh, so like the old man just said at the panel, which I didn't know. He's like, I had to sue him. Like, it, it became a whole legal thing. Right? Because contractually, they really did. There was nothing in my clause that said that I had to give him my solo out. So that became a whole, a whole thing. And they ended up settling for a couple of points. You know what I'm saying on the album, and I ended up selling what 750. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. How different was that for you though when you had to do that? Terrible. And as though you recorded with, you know, your whole recording career has been with this. Terrible, person. but necessary. How was it terrible? Horrible. Um, I would typically come in. Pimp would have some beats. We'll pick some different beats. Either he'd come up with a hook, I'd come up with a hook. All right, what well, we gonna do? Two, two verses, one you, one me, then we're going to split a 16. Okay, you going to go first, I'm going to go first. Man. So I, you know, do my writing obligation, write my little rhymes, go in and say my rhymes, I, I leave. But the nigga had already been in the studio a couple hours before I got there and was going to still be in that hole a couple hours after I left every time. That was my job now. I'd never done it before, never wanted to do it before. I never wanted to be a solo artist because I felt like I was in the best group of all time. I always felt like nobody was better than me. You could not put two niggas in a room and come up with what me and him did. Not as good as we did. So I had to start, the first thing I had to do was find beats. I ain't never had to look for a beat in my goddamn life. You had I was rapping with Pimp C. Yeah, you had to be. Who beats what I want? So I had to go out and do that <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. I had to go out and find beats. So I started calling my partners. I called KLC. KLC was the first nigga I called. Um, I told him what I wanted to do. I left him a voicemail. I said, I want to do a song. And the nigga called me the next day and had made the fucking song. I was rapping and humming in the goddamn phone. I said, I don't think I'm going to be all right. If I can tell these niggas what I want to do, you know what I'm saying, or what I'm trying to do, they can give me what I want. You know what I'm saying? So we just start calling partners, friends. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, we, we had an album. We felt comfortable with it. We put it out. Motherfucker got received well, and I was like, okay, we cooking now. And this whole free Pimp C shit was getting momentum and energy, which I just watched what Eminem and G Unit you know, was doing with Free Yayo. There wasn't no, you know, brainstorm for me. They had a partner locked up. They was doing a lot of big shit. And they had they big other partners doing big shit, wearing the shirt, saying the name. I said, we can do this. I know a bunch of niggas will wear 
of Free Pimp C shirt and say Free Pimp C. And I just carried the message from artist to artist, album to album. That became a whole thing because I didn't want the man to come home after that shit and have to be in a position of trying to rebuild this shit. So the whole time I'm getting energy and momentum, I'm letting niggas know it's still UGK for life. There were people that literally tried to convince me, if you want to leave, you, sh you could go. Because Pimp was not in the best place when he got locked up. There was a lot of behavior that I didn't agree with at the time. And so people literally was trying to talk. I was like, well, no, not finna do that now. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right, all right? Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want, you know, to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, all right? It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. That's right, a licensed therapist, all right? And switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. That means if you don't like the one, then maybe they ain't listening right. Go ahead, switch on up. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash 85 South today to get 10% off your first month, okay? That's BetterHelp.com slash 85 South. Go get help, food! Cra uh, the craziest thing about all this stuff I'm saying is that there's a witness in the room right. that can tell you whether or not I'm lying. It's Corey Moe. Right. Corey Moe was around for the majority of the shit that I'm talking about when he became age appropriate. Corey Moe's big brother, Mike Moe, was pimp's right hand for a while, helping him with recording and moving and do a lot of different things. And then as Corey got older, Corey come around, you know, I made beats, y'all made me. Good for you, Corey, good for you, little right. man, keep it up. And now niggas call Corey OG. Right. Yeah. You know, not, not, not dozens of niggas, a couple niggas, you know. <laughs> I'm one of them. Not, not everybody, but it is. But Corey can testify to a lot of the shit that I'm talking about, the good and the bad. And in spite of all of that, we kept this shit together. Because that was all that really mattered to me, was keeping this shit together. I saw so many groups break up. I saw so much petty shit break shit up. I saw real shit break shit up. I saw niggas start to grow in different directions. I never wanted that for us. I knew me and Pimp wasn't the same nigga when we started. We wasn't the same niggas in high school. We wasn't the same niggas as grown men. That was not a problem for me. Right. That didn't mean not to fuck with this man. I knew he did shit different than I did shit. That did not mean don't fuck with the man. Because when you start judging people, that's something wrong with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, as long as people show up to work, as long as people don't bring their bullshit to work, as long as people treat their family fine, I really don't see what the problem is. You know what I'm saying? It's only until it affects the family or the job when you start, you, know, you got to start checking yourself. Right. Um, but look, man, we, we loved each other. We didn't have to like each other all the time, and that's a big misconception. You know, Pimp and me and Pimp didn't even live in the same city for at least a dozen years. <laughs> You know, I was in Atlanta first, he was at home, then I came back, then he moved to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But there would be times where we probably wouldn't see each other for two months, two or three months um, in person. We talk on the phone or whatever, but get there. What's up, bro? Shit, boop, boop. All right, Pee Wee, let's get it. And get on stage and rap. You think me and this nigga been around each other all week? There was no need to force the friendship, bro. We were, th we were that already. You know, so outside of whatever people thought or people felt or people read or whatever this shit was. I love Chad, Chad loved me. And at the end of the day, that's all that really mattered. And the last thing we said to each other was, I love you. And I love you too. That's the last thing he said to me. It's the last thing I said to him. So I have closure in a situation. That being said, of course, I miss him. I've been trying not to cry this whole time because it's so overwhelming how impactful his life was. I see rap niggas all the time. I see that nigga. I look at jury, I see that nigga. I look at clothes, cars. He left so much for these niggas. Niggas are millionaires, they bosses. Cause he left a blueprint for niggas. I'm better, cause there was a blueprint. Showed me how to do this shit, put this shit together when he wasn't around. And he would have wanted these niggas to win. He wanted niggas to not be not talk shit on each other. Get to the paper. Get your motherfucking money. These niggas are getting so much money nowadays, it's ridiculous. I know that nigga love this shit. 
No, we do. Man, you looking at somebody that is, I mean, I can't even explain how heavily influential y'all allow on me, but like I always say, I grew up without a father. My father got killed. I grew up with, you know, losing many men in my family to violence and drugs. And I ain't never had to look at nobody outside of my family and want to be like nobody. Pimp C is the only person I ever looked at that was an entertainer that I wanted to be like. I wanted to be like this man. Like he was raised right. You know what I mean? The way that, the way that, the, the way, not just the music, just hearing him talk and hearing how passionate he was and how authentically him he was. Like that shit, that's where I get that from. Me walking around with half my braids missing and all that shit comes from the confidence that I had within myself and I watched this man throughout my life. Like I cried like a bitch when that man died on December 4th. Like I remember being in the, in the computer lab, I was in school and my daughter mama called me and told me Pimp C died. I was like, man, and we was beefing at the time. I was like, why would you call me and say some goof ass shit like that right. fucking with me? And I had, this was I'm in the computer lab. I looked it up and seen it, it was real. And I just started crying because I felt like I lost somebody I knew. Because I felt like I knew this man through No, the but you art. did. You did because he never had to really alter his true personality. The shit he said, he meant. And I, he said it on the, on the radio interview, which is the most Pimp C shit of all the oh, shit that's, he ever that's said. A classic, man. Is when, when the I nigga. The plane, what time is it? It's, it's not Mr. even that. It's the, when the nigga said, the nigga said, if I offended you with what I said, then I'm sorry. But I meant what I said. You, but I meant what I said. That was his motto. That's how he walked through life. And he was going to be him and move like how he moved. And you either was going to like it and rock with him or you wasn't going to like it. And like you were saying, it's a fight under that. You know? And look, he wasn't the easiest person to like, but he was hard not to love. It was hard not to love a nigga like that. The nigga was passion in, in, in the flesh. The nigga wanted to be great. He wanted niggas around him to be great. He wanted niggas that thought like him to be great, that came from where he came from to be great. He was so selfless. Niggas ain't appreciate it. They thought it was just rap and music, and it was. But he wanted the best for niggas, especially in the South. We spent a lot of time not being appreciated. And he didn't want the next niggas to go through it. So he, that's why he started saying country rap tunes and all that shit, because he wanted niggas to have pride from where they were from. And if they didn't feel accepted, it didn't mean they weren't supposed to be there. That's what that shit was really about. And now niggas walk through this game and get big money and hold they nuts and they ain't got to say they from the South or that they made it in spite of being from the South. Them niggas just the South. Nah, getting to the paper. And it's not just rap niggas, this. This show is a byproduct of Pimp C, of niggas feeling like they could be who they want to be and get to what they trying to get to and take their niggas with them and do it in a real way. This is a byproduct of all that shit. I look at niggas like y'all, and I know that the hard work and the sacrifice wasn't in vain. That niggas actually watched what that man was saying and listened and got some game, and some of these niggas took that shit and built on that shit and became not just artists, they became bosses and businessmen and factors out here. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's amazing to watch because these niggas, and now it's women. You, you look at Lotto and Megan, Glorilla, these are Pimp C, man, that's Pimp C. But all that shit, that confidence, you know what I'm saying, of being out and sh I'm gonna show my ass, I don't give a nigga better not touch me, you know what I'm saying? Now, Pimp, I'm coming out here, I'm gonna shine on you, nigga, nigga, but better not touch my chain, though. You know, bitch better not touch my dick. That, it's that confidence, I know I'm the shit. Y'all, I'm just waiting for y'all niggas to catch up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just waiting for y'all to catch up. That's what I see as I look through this game. I see a lot of people that not only listen to Pimp C, but they listened to Pimp C. And if you talk to his contemporaries, you talk to niggas like Tip and all of them, they'll tell you, man. Like, man, Pimp was serious. He was serious about the South. He was dead serious. And that's why niggas 
like the TIs and the Killer Mikes and these new generators. That's why they're so serious about how their business is handled, how their videos is shot, how their clothes is tailored, all that. Them niggas take pride because they South niggas. And they know it took a lot for South niggas to even get in them rooms. Mm -hmm. We're going to come through clean. We're not going to show up, you know what I'm saying, looking, whatever. Niggas wearing suits. I'm going to have a clean suit. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas wearing jewelry. Watch me. Watch this. I'm going to show you how South nigga do it. I take so much pride in watching the show. I just went to Paris with Slim. Boy, I tell you, if Slim Thug ain't learned from Pimp C, I don't know who he learned from. <laughs> And he a yellow nigga, yeah, too. South niggas. And he a yellow nigga, too. That's the other thing. He putting on. And they're putting on for the city, man. It's a lot of niggas putting on, man. I'm proud of these niggas. I really am. They doing them credit. They doing them justice. By getting out here and get to this paper, man, it's so much money. And these niggas getting it. Right. I love it. I used to have to sell one record out of a store. These niggas make one song and sell it 13 different goddamn ways. Nigga, we have to make an album. Nigga, make one good record. He out of here. Look at the comedian me and that came right at the beginning of the digital era. Max that hoe out, ringtones, online sales, website, all of that shit. Dunk. And then that man woke up one day and said, man, you know, eventually this rap shit gonna play out. If our record ain't big like the last record, this, this show, ain't, show money ain't gonna be like that. I need, I need this show money forever. Like, I need this kind of bread that I'm getting now forever. Right. And start moving on it before the shit started going down. And he walked away from the game. Niggas the Barry Sanders a rap. The nigga can still rap, can still make music, do all that shit, but it ain't really necessary. I did what I came to do. I said what I said. And I see some old paper over there. I'm holler at y'all. Mm. Look how hard it is to get a rap model Ross now. <sighs> Think that nigga over there worried about rapping? That's probably the smallest check he get. Well, obviously not because he got the label deal and all that. He got incentives or whatever. But what these things he trying to do, man, and the effort... The, the, the effort that it takes to make the money that he's making from all these other different businesses and everything that it takes to kind of go into the music, now he's where Jay is. When I make an album, it's to perpetuate my other businesses. When Ho make an album, it is not about the money an album make. He'll make more money from the sponsorships than the album could make, no matter how many it sell. Mm -hmm. We know Ross. From the getting... tour partnerships that they'll produce from that type of shit. Ross getting some money. He got up and left talking to us to go get something in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> Nigga, I get into I get into places as a rapper. I could never, I ain't never been invited to Coachella. As no rapper. Niggas ain't never asked me to come to Coachella and say a motherfucking word. You they they burgers. want them burgers again. Right. Can you come back and can you do this festival too? Man, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like. You gotta be open to change, man. You can't be trying to hold on to this shit for too long. God will be calling you and telling you, man, come over here, come over here. Nah, I'm good right here. All right, my nigga. All right. See Don't say I ain't tell you. And I ain't go, it ain't gonna be here. When you get back. When you get back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna be here. Mm -mm. It came to me with that. I said, let's go. Been gone ever since. Well, I, I've been to the to the restaurant. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy DC on Fly. In case you haven't heard, we at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. And for our loyal supporters, we are currently offering 20% off for six months. Just use code 85 per center. Right, spread it out. Code 85 P E R C E N T E R. Once you sign up, you'll get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than everyone else on YouTube. All of our new live shows, independent specials, new shows like Five on the 85, and even get your special offers and discounts for 85 South merchandise. And the shows, it's only $8.50 a month or $85 for the whole year. And you can find us online at china85.com or on your iPhone, Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, Roku, and even on Android. And remember, use code 85PERCENTER for 20% off for a whole six months. That's channel 85, subscribe.